Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. First of all, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. This is actually releasing on the Monday that is not only right after Christmas, but the day before my birthday. Yeah, born on the 27th. Now you know what 1227 stands for. Video is at the bottom. Again, another fantastic week for video content. Uh, lots of Final Fantasy 15 stuff, lots of Final Fantasy 14 stuff, and a lot more to come. A lot of speculatory videos for 14. I've still got a few more guides. I will excuse me, I want to put out for Final Fantasy 15. Plus, we're almost in the new year, so we have new goals to go over, and on top of that, we have new games coming out with new content for the channel. It's been fantastic, so thank you those of you who have recently subscribed to the channel. Hopefully, you've been enjoying it and know that I will be continuing to support Final Fantasy 14 and Final Fantasy 15 in the long term on this channel. I mean, I support Final Fantasy 15 and I support Final Fantasy in general, so that shouldn't be too big of a surprise. But anyway, I'm not doing this live today. I figured it would be a shorter episode because it's, you know, Christmas Day that I'm actually recording this, so so let's get over to the questions. I see we have about 21 questions on the forums. Another reason why it kind of didn't make sense to do it live. I just want to say this. I know Fan Festival just happened. I made the videos. Every question that's just, this is what I think the shirt is. What do you think? Just letting you know now, probably going to skip over them because my answer is going to be the same for every single one. I also made a video going over what the shirt is. It's going to be one of the videos. Maybe it'll be one of the videos I put at the bottom of the screen. Um, but it's just that it's going to be the same answer over and over again. So if I see it multiple times, I'll probably just, uh, I'll probably just skip over to the next question. Just letting you know now. With that in mind, let's get to the first question. Hello. Uh, what are those up, up arrow, up arrow? There's another name for them. Uh, as I, I use them for, never mind. Gaming question. What's your favorite non RPG, non MMORPG game? That's, I actually have a few, I guess it depends because like Devil May Cry is one of my favorite series. That's not an RPG. That's not an MMORPG. It's an action game through and through. So does that count? Yeah, because Devil May Cry is so far up there for me. I friggin' love Devil May Cry. I mean, the thing is, Legend of Zelda is an RPG. Mario is not an RPG, but it's definitely not anywhere close to being my favorite. So there's, oh man, that's a tough, tough one to pick up, man. Dino Crisis 2 is an awful game that I loved back in the day. Resident Evil 4 it's really good. Oh, man. Now, I'm going to go with Devil May, the Devil May Cry series in general. Devil May Cry 1, 3, and 4. We're going to ignore DM... I actually liked DMC Devil May Cry, and, and Devil May Cry 2 is okay. At least it was the Devil May Cry combat, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go with the Devil May Cry series. It's my favorite series outside of RPGs. And non-gaming question: Who's your favorite superhero, super villain, superhero? You know, it wouldn't have been Iron Man before Robert Downey Jr. took over the role. It would have been Batman, especially because I grew up with the the Justice League TV show and Batman. The way they portray Batman there is great. Even I think uh, Christian Bale, while he didn't make a great uh, he didn't make a great uh, Bruce Wayne, he did make a decent Batman. Minus, minus the whole thing like this. And even uh, even Ben Affleck, I liked Ben Affleck as Batman. I think I think they did a solid casting role for him. But I mean, Robert Downey Jr. I've gone back and I've watched a lot of Iron Man cartoon, and I've gone back and looked at a lot of his stories. He's far more interesting to me now. Kind of Robert Downey Jr. made me interested with his performance in Iron Man. So that's my favorite superhero. Super villain. I don't really like too many super villains. Um, I actually am kind of a big fan of some of the Flash's villains more because. They're not really a huge threat to him, like Captain Boomerang. Uh, I'm a big fan of him. Not that, not the Suicide Squad one. Like I mean, like the actual Captain Boomerang. Um, and uh, God, I can't even remember some of them nowadays. Uh, and then if I if I had to pick one of the like super OP ones, I would go with Brainiac. I mean, you you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with Brainiac. I just he's a I, I love that guy. All right, second question. Hey, Mr. Happy, glad to see you're more motivated by your YouTube channel since the release of 15. Yes, it has been fantastic. We jumped up like 7K subscribers or something. Uh, it's closer to like 5K subscribers, I guess, in the past uh, couple of weeks. It's been fantastic. Uh, 3.0 added the collectible system for Crafters Gathers. What changes for crafting and gathering do you think we may see in 4.0? Well, they specifically said that with swimming and diving being incorporated, there would be new types of gathering. So underwater, underwater uh, gathering at the very least. Spear fishing would be one that wouldn't surprise me as for crafting that's a better question because i i have nothing man crafting in this game is already pretty complex they tried to add specialists and it didn't really i don't feel like specialists and scripts really did anything for crafters or gatherers i feel like the means of gear progression was definitely done a lot better so i don't know man it, it, i don't feel like crafting is one of those things that really needs gameplay updates you know people who got into it got into it because of the way it is and making it more complicated and more complex just makes it a little bit more jarring for new players to get into it you know what i mean so 
gathering, new types of gathering, new locations, but for crafting, I don't see much of anything happening in that case. All right, next question. I've noticed that you never use the word retarded, and I'll use it just for the sake of this question. Even when the question has the word in it, why do you prefer to not use the word retarded? Well, by the way, good observation. It is true. I don't like using that word. Um, I've, I've grown up around a lot of people who have mental disabilities, and I just feel like even just using it as a term, it's kind of like when you call something gay. It's like, yo, that's so gay. It's like, I kind of like I grew out of that at a pretty young age. Like maybe I stopped stopped doing that maybe when I was like 17. And considering where I grew up, New Jersey, where everybody uses it even into their 20s, it was uh, I stopped using it at 17 because I got I mean because I a I wasn't homophobic and b I didn't have anything against people with mental disabilities. So like using them even to just describe a situation. I, I just, I tried to distance myself from it. Uh, it was even before I became a broadcaster, but when I was first becoming a broadcaster, when I had more of an ego, uh, I think I used them sometimes uh, a little bit more frequently. Not the, not the gay one, but I think I used the retarded one a little bit more frequently. And sort of when I, when I stopped and I had made that apology video and I wanted to sort of recreate my image, stop being so aggressive and things like that, but uh, still a little bit of a man child, I, uh, I really wanted to make sure that uh, I, I cleaned up my vocabulary. It was a little bit more presentable. And words like that, even if it's just repeating back what somebody else said, I like to try and avoid it. It's just, it's, I get this, I get what you're saying. I get what, what people mean by it. They're not actually, you know, they don't actually dislike people with mental, uh, with mental disabilities. But I still feel like using it as this term doesn't help the image of you, what, how you feel about people with mental disability. I mean, my nephew, my 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 sister's son. I mean, he has he has uh, autism, uh, and he's recovering from it. He's well, the 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 what's it called? Not recovering. The uh, what's the word? The therapy that he has has helped a lot. But uh, I mean, it's just it's not a good thing to say. It's not a good word to have in your vocabulary. It doesn't matter who you're talking to. If it's not a bunch of people who are your friends, and even then it's not a great thing to say. It just, there's no, it's one of those words that just has no kind of place in your vocabulary, at least in my opinion. All right, on to another question. Hey, Happy, another 15 question this week. I was fishing, I was, I thought you said fishing. I was finishing up the optional dungeons in 15 and utilizing heal cast magic and castle mark. Yeah, if you do two high potions or two high elixirs, I think it's high potions. Two high potions, level 99 heal cast magic will heal you. So I think what I learned about heal heal uh, heal magic in Final Fantasy 15 is the level determines the percentage of your max HP. So if you have a level 99 heal craft magic, it heals you all of your black health, even if uh, it, it heals you all your health, even if it's uh, even if it's black health. Um, whereas if it's level 50, it would only heal you to 50%. So I kind of went into Castle Mark thinking heal craft would work like the level 99 way. And then it didn't cause I only use level 50 magic and I just stopped using it It made things a lot harder. Um, uh, but you're saying that it's kind of a poor excuse for white magic. Uh, are you disappointed with items being the main way to restore and buff in 15? No, I don't like how efficient they are, though. I feel like that's something that uh, a lot of people have suggested. And the thing is, no other Final Fantasy game has really restricted you on items. I guess technically the first couple of them did, because they would only let you hold a certain number of items, depending on if you're playing a remake or whatnot. But, uh, I mean, it's I'm sure they just thought, you know, oh, you know, items, whatever. Maybe they could have restricted them more. I kind of just don't like the, how free items are in the first place. Um, but however, I did think about this. We were discussing this I, when I was in the middle of my level one playthrough. And I was thinking to myself, it would be really cool to have more protective magic. I mean, you can even see King, uh, you can even see, you know, Noctis' father. You can see him using magic that is protective for himself, creating a shield around himself, creating a shield around other people. Clearly that magic exists and it's possible, at least with the Ring of the Lucii. So it would have been nice to have seen more types of magic, more defensive types of magic like that, as opposed to strictly making uh, offensive elemental magic that sometimes have some healative properties. Things like Protect Shell, and you name a bunch of them here, Raze, Asuna, and it's balanced around the idea that you still have to craft it like magic, you know what I mean? But with items just being so much the way to go, with so many items, I guess that's why they didn't bother using those magics. I, I definitely agree. I think it could have benefited from having those types of magics in there, but we didn't have them, and... I didn't think about it until it was so far past the game because I just took the game for what it was um, that it didn't really bother me in my playthrough. It bothered me kind of after the fact um, and not, not to the point where I didn't like what I was playing anymore. I understood why the magic wasn't there. It just present uh, in terms of presenting those 
uh, those effects on the player, though, yes, Magic would have been a flashier way, and it would have been more appealing, and I think a lot of people would have liked it. On to the next one. Hey there, Mr. Happy, long-time follower, first-time poster. Have a bonus. Any bonus. I'll bold my actual question if you don't have time to read anything extra. Thank you. I always appreciate that. I Sometimes I like to read the question first and then read the context also. My question is, you have the Healer Happy series going and see how helpful it can be for making some guidance on playing a new healer or a player who's new to the healer job. Would you ever make a similar home game hollowed ground happy tanking version? So I've considered it. Tanking is not something I'm super interested in. I do it when I need to do it. Like I have the 275 axe for Warrior, but I don't, I don't know that I would ever, there's a lot of little nuances in tanking. That's what makes tanking fun, is tanking in itself where you just do your job, you take the hits, and you do whatever damage is possible within the restriction of what you need to do to do your job. Okay, that's tanking. That's boring. That's been boring since World of Warcraft, you know? That's where it's like drop consecration and laugh at everything. Um, but for Final Fantasy XIV, there's a lot of little nuances that make it more interesting. You know, how many GCDs do you get? How many GCDs between abilities? How many GCDs with certain buff? How, ma how many seconds does the boss only auto attack? How, what's the timer between abilities? You know, there's a lot of little nuances in there. And those are things you don't really see till 60. So if I'm going to be teaching those things, I feel like they're only valuable. I guess maybe they start becoming valuable in the 40s and 50s. But they are really valuable at 60 when all the all the tank jobs have their proper tanking tools and their damage dealing tools. And at that point, it's kind of a different series altogether. It's it's more of a this is how you tank, and then you start having, and then you need to show every individual boss fight. And at that point, I might as well be making guides as a tank because that's what it is. Every fight is a very unique learning experience for a tank. When you can use what cooldowns. Uh, how much damage you take at certain portions, when can you pull out DPS versus when do you need to be in tank stance, when can you DPS in, when can you tank in DPS stance with a cooldown up. All those things are just ma massive, massive individual scenario things. What I could teach, doing a dungeon, doing a level 60 dungeon. I can teach that with any one video in a dungeon. Hey, you're level 60, you're wondering what it's going to be like to tank a dungeon. Here's what it'll be like if you're a first time. Here's what it'll be like if you're more experienced. Here's what it'll be like with little gear. Here's what it'll be like with more gear. But I don't feel like that as a whole series, that's as valuable. Because when you're tanking going up through the dungeons, there's very few things that you need to know. Whereas with healer, there's all these little tricks that you start picking up on a on a dungeon to dungeon basis. Hey, I can kite the mobs here. Hey, you know, Black Mage just got this ability, so they may have more trouble. It, I guess the thing is, I more used healer to point out other people and the way they were playing, and also comment on healers and tanks. Because here's the thing, I'm watching the tank as a healer. I'm watching the DPS as a healer. I can point out everything that at least I feel like people should be picking up on, or things that I pick up on while I'm in the middle of the dungeon. And I don't feel like there's any benefit to me doing that from a different perspective, specifically in the case of, the, in the, of a Let's Play type, uh, type series. So hopefully that's a satisfactory answer. Those are my uh, feelings towards it. Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy, longtime follower, first time poster. Have a bonus of whatever potato dish you like for Christmas leftovers. Dude, just straight up mashed potatoes. Done. I've been playing a monk for a year now, and since I started playing Final Fantasy XIV, I just have gotten into endgame rating. My free company is currently on a 10 savage, but I feel like I'm holding them back since I'm struggling to get around 2k DPS. Uh, Paladin, Warrior, Scholar, White Mage, Dragoon, Bard, Black Mage, Monk is comp we use. Not a bad one. Uh, and being on the PS4, the realities and a lot of options show me what I'm doing wrong. First of all, what you're the Monk, so you're doing 2k DPS. First of all, let me just say this. Of the amount of DPS that you could be doing, 2k is more than sufficient for a 10 Savage. Don't think you're holding them back with 2k. If you were doing 1.4k... I would tell you you're holding them back. If you were doing 900, you would be holding them back. But 2,000? And now, keep in mind, I don't know if you're talking about on a dummy. I don't know if you're talking about you're on a dummy or you're on the fight itself. If you're doing 2,000 DPS by whatever point you're wiping as a monk, there is you are doing nothing to hold your party back, let me tell you that. Um, so, is there anything I can do in-game to help me find out what I'm doing wrong? And do you have any advice? Ask a friend. Look for monks on your server that are experienced and ask them. Sometimes they don't want to be bothered, but some of them are really nice. So look around for help. Get a friend to, to use ACT for you. Say, hey, friend who's on PC, can you come parse me for like 30 minutes over at this thing? I'm trying to improve my play, and I could really use your help since I'm on PS4. Sure, I'll come out there and help you if you think it'll help with you improving your monk play. Comes over, bam, done. Those are the things I think you got to do to help improve. Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. Hi. First, I want to say sorry about the previous week's post. I had not I had either not worded correctly or placed too much on an idea, but what I got was how questions should be posted. Again, my bad. Sorry for calling you out, but I feel like I say that very frequently where um, I have an idea, questions, just they're just not very good for, uh, for 
Mondays with Mr. Happy. So you have two questions. First, I have been hitting a little problem with my numbers on raid. Oh, hey, this is a lot like the last question. Imagine you said the exact same comp and you're like in the same raid group. That'd be funny. You're the summoner. Okay, I clear all the way to 8 12 Savage Harper when I look to see if I fall compared to others extremely low, even when I'm top deep. Dude, dude, listen. First of all, let me tell you, if you're beating 8 12 Savage, don't worry about it. I'm a, I got forced onto Machinist this raid here. My Machinist is by no means of a high quality. I did, learned what I could, and I kind of flew with the rest of it. I picked things up as I did the fights. That's a big thing, by the way. As a summoner, you need to learn how to do individual fights. So that's going to be tip number one on how you can improve. I'm not sure if it's my party composition. Let's see. I mean, you don't have you don't have a bard. So first of all, let me say this: most summoner parses have bards. I not not all of them, but most of them do. So keep that in mind. You don't have a bard, you're never going to get the machinist uh, magic buff so or magic debuff, so keep that in mind. Don't compare yourself to, to uh, summoners that have bards in their party because the numbers are being boosted, not in a bad way, but they're benefiting from the synergy of Fos Requiem. Um, also, one thing I remember a summoner telling me is he would full dot on Alexander and then go do the ad, and then, I don't know if he tried his ad at the ad, and then he would dot the ad and he would be generating DPS from both scenarios. That's another thing with summoners is knowing when it's good to multi-dot versus needing to bane. Sometimes it requires your party to place ads or a boss in a certain position so you can bane off the target. Things like that are little DPS increases that absolutely help. Um, so I would recommend same, kind of same thing as the last guy. Look for a summoner. Ask him questions who's beaten 8 12 Savage that you can get a hold of. Ask them questions. Educate yourself. The fact that you're asking me means you want to have somebody help you. The difference is I don't play summoner, so I can't give you the right advice. So you need to find someone and ask who does play summoner and ask them the exact same question. Uh, second, I'm pretty pumped about finally having another caster class Red Mage. So there's, I got to do a video about that. Red Mage has been confirmed to be a full-on caster DPS like Black Mage and Summoner. It is not something that is fulfilled in the same role as Bard and Machinist. It is not a melee support like... Um, like ninja it's obviously going to have uh you know some sort of supporty features you know every job sort of has a skill that it's that synergizes with the rest of the raid group but it is more direct dps like black mage and uh, summoner than it is anything else keep that in mind uh i i really want to check out red mage it looked so good it was it was it was better than i envisioned i wanted red mage to have the whole rapier and use magic at the same time but the way it was presented to me was better than i anticipated so it met my expectations and then exceeded them immediately after uh by the way thank you for the questions and happy holidays on that note next one hey haps hope you're doing well today i am doing swell thank you for asking uh, quick question, do you think there's any chance we'll see an in-game microphone chat system? You know, I, I think yeah, now that the PS3 support is gone, uh, but I don't think it's high on their list of things to do. I think they kind of accept that most people don't want to use an in-game microphone function, either because A, they don't want to deal with people raging in dungeons and stuff, or abuse cases like that, or B, most people just use some sort of third-party tool like on their phone right next to them. So I think they've, they've kind of hit status quo where they won't do it. I don't think it's out of the question. I think it could be done, but I think they've hit, I think they've hit a point where they just won't, straight up won't add it to the PlayStation 4 version of the game, mostly because other PC players probably wouldn't use it and uh, even PS4 players would probably be somewhat hesitant on the fact that, you know, the way that people sort of interact with each other sometimes in dungeons, it, it can change, it can, it can get things a little saltier than when you just have to, when you have to type something out, when you have to take the effort to type something out. So uh, we'll see, but I don't think they're going to do it. Next question. Hi, Mr. Happy. I haven't asked you a question in quite a while, but I have a bonus of Final Fantasy XV's DLCs already. Dude, I would love to have Final Fantasy XV's DLCs already. That would be sweet. I have two questions regarding XV. The first one, spoiler. The second one isn't. Guys, here's what we do for spoiler questions if you're watching this. Bam. Do that. It's off the screen. I'll do a thumbs up when it's over. Denzo. All right. We're going to start the spoiler question now. All right. Let's see here. After Noctis' first encounter with Bahamut in the Crystal, I was confused why he was stuck for 10 years before he could return to Insomnia. Was he in exile or training with Bahamut? He, it took 10 years for the, hit, for the ring to absorb all of the light in the Crystal. Luckily, that's a very easy answer. That's not something we need to reach outside the game for. It took 10 years for all the light to reach outside of the Crystal. With that out of the way, spoiler question's over. We can bring things back. Uh, I'll give everyone a second to turn their mic or their volume back on. And let me make sure that I scroll down to the right point because I don't remember where it is. I'm going to scroll down past it. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's do that. There we go. Second question. I've been hearing how 15 is connected to 13. No, originally 15 as versus 13 was part of the Fabula Nova Chrysalis um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Not universe, uh, mythos. It basically, it had things like Lysi, it had things like Falci. It was very much focused on the goddess Etro and uh, all of those things. So it had a very similar theme. However, when it became 15, while you can kind of tell that some of those things weren't lost entirely, all the terminology and the mythos are gone. So they are not actually connected, but they were at one time once connected via the same mythos. And on to the next one. I've come up with a new recipe. I don't know why I did it like that. Hey, Mr. Happy, long time no ask. I have a bonus of Ethis's head imploding. The best bonus. Here's my question. With Stormblood having a veil of mystery, Samurai being a possible job as a tank, are there any little tidbits of nostalgia you'd like to see in the story or rotation, if nothing more than a name and ability, uh, what it would be? Man, I want 100 fists for Monk, dude. Just give me 100 fists. You see, as a pugilist, Hamon... What, what are you doing, Aloha? My cat is... My cat is, is chilling at my feet, and he's trying to sleep, and I think he's snoring. Um, I would, I want, dude, I want Monks to get 100 fists. That's it. That's my answer. Monks, 100 fists, done. Personally, it would make me smile to see 11 solo skill chain combos as a rotation. Oh, you're talking about for Samurai. Oh, 100 fists. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I mean, Sagan. Sagan Third Eye. If it's going to be a tank, it's got to have Sagan Third Eye. It probably won't work exactly the same because that would be OP, but something along those lines. Maybe it just doesn't work on abilities. It only works on auto attacks. Who knows? But even then, that's still kind of a stretch. That's eh, cut off a little bit at the top, that's fine. Hey Haps, Red here, got a question for you about how to best utilize my tank, but first, a backstory. So I know it's possible, holy moly, I didn't even know you could do this, look at this. He's straight, dude, this is some effort, look at this. <laughs> holy moly, he like, dude, this guy went hardcore, dude, there's no way I can skip this question, although it is a lot. Oh, look at this, he even put Titan at the bottom. So you're, so here you're talking about your rotation. Uh, so you learned that you learned your job wrong. Well, at least you know now. Um, power slash builds a lot of aggro. Use dark arts, carbon spit. Assume that that was the best extent of dark knight, but I was wrong. Adopting my rotation, coming in and out of grit, and using dark knight in rotation. By the way, dark arts isn't just something you use with carbon spit. Dark arts is something that you use with uh, soul eater quite frequently, which I see that you notice here. Dark arts with soul eater. If grit was on, you heal. If not, it just does a lot of damage. Yeah. So it seems like you picked up a lot of the basic things. So your question two actually. Um, do you know uh, if I need to make any additional adjustments? I would Google an actual Dark Knight guide. I wouldn't ask me. I would ask, like, that's the thing. Unless I specialize in a job, I would definitely go directly to the source. I don't know any Dark Knight jo uh, job guides off the top of my head, but they're definitely out there. So just because I don't know them doesn't mean they don't exist. But people who actually play Dark Knight can answer this question better. Also, by the way, um, Vitality is your main stat as a Dark Knight. Vitality increases your damage by the same per point as Strength, and there's more Vitality on gear. I will say that vitality accessories right side you should be putting strength on them so keep that in mind um and then so i know this has been discussed okay so that was that question third question I think you can make a rotation guy for dark i'm not a dark knight expert i don't really feel like it's my place you know like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be able to learn dark to the same efficiency that people who have been playing it since 3.0 who have made the guides are actually going to be able to do it if anything i'd be learning from them and then making a guide from their information in which case i just resort back to their information and i might as well just tell you to go watch their guide that i don't know the guide off the top of my head because i need to learn the job as efficiently as the people who have put all the time into it it's just not right it's like when i used to do the job guides back in 2.0 when they were not jobs i mean to be fair jobs are way simpler back then i can master a job in like a day at that point <laughs> Not even master, but like 90% efficiency kind of deal. At least speak intelligently about it. Um, and that nowadays, there's there's a lot more that goes into it. I feel like unless you've tanked a raid tier, like, and I have not tanked this raid tier, you just don't have the ability to give people proper advice about it. You can give people generic advice, but to go the full force, you're basically either reiterating what someone else told you, or it's it's... You probably don't know it from experience, is what I'm saying. You need to go to people who know it from experience. That's my advice. Next question. We're about halfway through the questions right now. Yo, Mr. Happy, triple triad questions this time. One, how many cards have you collected? I think like 76 or something like that. Two, we haven't gotten an upgrade to let us four or five star cards at the same time. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of sucks. Four star cards are just garbage. I don't know why we haven't gotten that yet. I, I feel like we could get that at some point, yeah. Just uh, same thing they did with one, two, and three. Do it with the four star cards. And three, would you rather have unlimited four star cards and one five star card or unlimited three star cards or less with one, four, and five? No, I mean, here's the thing. I would much rather have, uh, well, yeah, I know, I'd rather have it so you can get 1-4 and 1-5, not unlimited 4s. I mean, just something, because there's, at the current time, you just have no reason to use a 4, unless it's, like, integral to a deck strategy, or, like, beating an NPC or something like that. So, yeah, I'd rather have, you know, unlimited 3s, 1-4, and 1-5. That's what I would want for Triple Triad. Next question, hey, happy, no question this week. Just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas, happy birthday. Enjoy and thank you for everything you do. You know what? 
Thank you for those happy holiday wishes. You have a Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Drive safe, travel safe, eat lots of food. High five. Oh, God. I see who's asking this question. Okay, that, that's fine. Hey, Happy, I have a quick question. So you're, so our machinist has been severely underperforming. He never parses. And despite running two monks, I feel like he's just not worth bringing along. Not only that, he's inconsistent with mechanics. Okay, first of all, Sato, you do not get to say I'm inconsistent with mechanics. You, of all people, do not get to say I'm inconsistent with mechanics. Because you don't know north from south. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The number of A11 Savage Wipes that have come from you running with the tanks north as opposed to running to the south. What do you go? Southwest corner, actually? Listen, man. You don't get to call me inconsistent mechanics ever. Second of all, you kept saying I was getting better, man. You kept saying my machinist is getting better. That's my that's my raid scholar, by the way, who's Australian and dies the mechanics from latency and from running north instead of south a lot. So thank you for the question, Sato. I think uh, your machinist is better than you. All right, next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. So I just finished Final Fantasy XV. After some pondering, I have to say this game is a big disappointment. Better than thirteen, as I like the gameplay, but other than that, it's a clusterfuck of a game. Don't know why you censored yourself, or if the, if the forums did that. I have two questions. All right, let's hope they're not spoilerific, and I'll do my best not to answer them in a spoilerific way. Because unfortunately, when it comes to regarding when talking about Final Fantasy XV, you have to be very careful about what's a spoiler and what's not, because we all know where most people go with their complaints. As a Final Fantasy game, it didn't feel like a Final Fantasy game in its story and scope. For an incredibly long time now, Western games have, had, have been killing it with the story, narrative, and execution. The Last of Us, Witcher 3, Uncharted, to name a few, compared to 13, 13, 2, and Lightning Returns. Oh, God. Should Square Enix bring some outside people from the West to help out with crafting better cohesiveness and overall better game outside of Japan? So, Last of Us and Uncharted, probably not great comparisons, because that's Western storytelling done in non-RPG titles. Witcher 3 is probably a better comparison, because it is a very similar game in terms of it being, you know, an, a more an open-world RPG. Although, personally, I don't like Witcher 3's storytelling, but that's because of the open world. That's because Witcher 3 is a very non-linear game, and storytelling in linear games is always better okay i know let me rephrase is more likely to be better because i know we have final fantasy 13 right here so in games that you go from point a to point b the storytelling should always be more cohesive because there's a constant sense of urgency there's a constant sense of progression that's why games like the last of us and uncharted can craft these better stories because they're constantly moving you along in the story witcher 3 very similar to, to pretty much all open world games, suffers from allowing you to basically ignore the story and do whatever you want. And then when you come back to the story, the sense of urgency that came with the story in the first place isn't there. And I don't think Witcher 3's story was good at all until the DLCs came around. Uh, other than that, it just felt like the just felt like Geralt being a bunch of naked chicks and just just a bunch of just meeting a bunch of chicks and hitting on them and whatever. Like I didn't ever feel like there was a sense to the story until like the very end and then even then I wasn't satisfied with it until I started accustoming myself with the DLC uh, story. Um, so no, I don't think they need to bring in Western people. I think what they need to do though is they need to narrow down their scope. Stop trying to make these huge, unbelievable titles and focus on things like the old school Final Fantasies. And I know a lot of people get sick when you say that, but they those games were not open world. They had a world map, but they constantly were pushing you in the direction of the story until the very end, at which point you have a few things you can do on the side, some activities. That's a good formula, I feel, as opposed to a full open world where you're constantly getting lost in side quests. And I feel like you can then you bring down the scope of the game a little bit. And it's all big areas, but you don't need it to be open world, and you don't need to worry about all the different things that uh, that come with dealing with open world games, and then having issues with getting it done. I also think 15, as long as every other Final Fantasy game is not on Luminous Engine, should be okay. Even 13 storytelling, 13 and 13 2 storytelling was mostly cohesive until 13 2's DLC ending came out. That was bullshit. And Final Fantasy 13 relying on you to read data logs to understand everything. That's also not good. It's just that uh. I think that this is kind of just a struggle in terms of deadlines because this game was only in development for about three years out of the 10 year development hell it went through and the deadlines were strict. Square Enix was like, you have to finish this game. Your optimizations, your voice acting, all that done in this time. And they said, please give us two more months to optimize more. And they said, fine, but it's releasing at that point. You cannot push this game back anymore. And that probably wasn't the best choice, uh, especially with the way a lot of people feel. I'm happy that it released. I just wanted the game to release. If they want to patch that shit later, fine. I had a good time when I played it. But I don't think bringing in any Western storytellers when you're dealing with an Eastern company is going to help at all. And as for the second question, 
The second question is, uh, should fans continue to support Square Enix if this... I mean, fans support a company if they like the product. If they buy the product, it means they're supporting the product. So, yeah. If this is if people like what's being offered, I liked Final Fantasy 15. I wouldn't go back and tell my previous self not to purchase it. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 feels like an incomplete game even after 10 years development. Okay, I just answered that before. Game was not in development for 10 years. Nomura, they said, hey, we need you to we need you to work on this game while working on all the Kingdom Hearts games simultaneously. So Nomura went from having a character that was like this and then changing this character's story and then and then he would work on a Kingdom Hearts game, and then he'd come back and be like, no, never mind, I want to tell this story in a trilogy. 13, versus 13 was almost a trilogy like 13. And then he's like, okay, never mind. And then Final Fantasy 14 1.0 happened, and then the company was in a scramble, and then on top of that, Nomura then wanted to make the game a fucking musical back in 2013, and that was finally when Square was like, all right, we need to get this guy off this product, off this project, because this is never going to finish if Nomura's in charge of this. Just finish, just work on Kingdom Hearts, you're great at that. Sorry for giving you 10 million different games to work on and expecting it not to take 10 years to get done when... Kingdom Hearts is your baby. We're sorry. And on top of that, then, for the... Th just actually three years of development, approximately three to three and a half, um, that amount of time in development spent... Uh, they spent about... God knows how much time trying to get the story right with moving it away from the Fabula Nova Chrysalis mythos, with getting Nomura's original ideas, some of them at least to be intact with the new story. Um, and then they had to rewrite another story from scratch to some degree. They borrowed, obviously, certain things, but they had to determine what they could borrow, what they had to rewrite. So now they got to go back to the drawing board with rewriting the story. Then you got to worry about the scope of the game in terms of its open world, the amount they wanted to do, the amount they actually finished, which clearly is not as much as they would have liked because the entire continent in which Tenebrae is on does not have, you know, there's no exploring there. Uh, and then Altissia's continent as well, the Accordo. It, clearly, there are things that they wanted done that didn't get done in time, so they had to sort of consolidate what they could and get the story out in a cohesive piece that lacks world building, but at least lets you tells you Noctis' story from beginning to end. Uh, and that's ultimately what it comes down to. It tells you Noctis' story from beginning to end. And uh, could it have been better? Absolutely. Do I think it was deliberately cut for DLCs? No, I think it was cut for time. Because Granis gave them a deadline and said, you got to finish this fucking game in time. He said, there's no way we can get these things done in time. They got what they got done. They were happy with the reviews that they got. And they're going to be patching in things that the, that the players are asking for anyway. So good to know they're not just giving up and saying, well, that's what it was. Fuck you. And now DLCs pay us. They're doing other free things. They're going to be patching in new story cutscenes. Who knows what they're actually going to end up doing, what the scope of the free updates are. I'm looking forward to it, though. And as long as Grannis continues to listen to their fan base, when their fan base gives them feedback and says, hey, we want this, we want that, and they say, you know what, absolutely, we'll patch in new cutscenes for this character. We'll patch in these things so you can do level one challenges or new game plus. We'll patch in a higher difficulty, which hopefully they do. Uh, on top of that, we'll do the paid updates. We'll do more free updates for a game that is single player and honestly probably doesn't need any updates or doesn't, uh, shouldn't be getting updates because they should be focusing on the next project. They're doing it. As long as Square Enix keeps proving that they can admit this is what's wrong, we want to patch it, I will support them as a company. Now that my voice is a little hoarse, next question. Hi Mr. Happy, first time asker, questions about possibly obsolete style of play in 14. I, I You put 24, but I know you meant 14. So I have 100 definitely obsolete tombstones of philosophy and apologies for being so lame. I'm hearing a lot of people saying they think one healer as the off-healer is a sign of a bad player group. This comes with a straw man argument where one healer does no healing and the other does, uh, and the other does sub 200 DPS. So this is really off I don't really feel like... Uh, so we had this discussion actually in my raid group about is there a healer and an off-healer? Not really. You have... Both healers kind of share some responsibility. It's all about what you need to get past an ability. It's not like you need one healer and that one healer is destined to take care of everything it's more along the lines of what can be got what do you need mitigation for what do you need very little healing for what do you need a lot of healing for if you need very little healing one healer can take care of it other healer dps is full time if it's big attack that requires mitigation both one healer is on recovering the hp after the other one's on protecting them from the damage that's coming next then if it's uh if there's a point where there's no almost no damage at all you could do the whole throw a dot or throw a heal over time on the tank maybe throw some sort of mitigation on him, and then DPS for like 10 seconds, and then go back to taking care of whatever other mechanics. There's no one situation where it's just one off healer. You know, it's all, every individual attack and every individual scenario, you need to be sort of uh, collecting the information and coming up with a strategy that works best. Sometimes people want to say, you know what, can I full-time DPS this? And the other healer goes, it's going to be tough, but yeah. Okay, fine. It was discussed, and that's not something that you need to do, but it's something you're electing to do. Um, and now you have a mindset, uh, 
I think most people may here refer to the relative split of responsibility according to the strength of the two jobs. Current viability, the knocked Astro White Mage uh, or Ash to Ash. This distinction may have lost its usefulness to some group due to the similarity of these jobs' tool sets. Um, well, Astro has a much better tool set than a White Mage does. They everything's better. <laughs> Everything's better. This viability hasn't pushed Scholar out of the meta. So far, it's the only one from a reasonable choice. The Scholar that still lives firmly on an off-field role because the job's tools make for strong burst healing and efficient, safe, sustained DPS. It's not even the burst healing. It's the mitigation. Um, Scholar brings great MP management, great mitigation. It has a pet with a bottomless MP pool, even if it doesn't generate a lot of healing. It's got a lot of... It synergizes with a lot of defensive cooldowns. You mean you've got even just one of your main heals as a defensive cooldown for your tank. You have a defensive cooldown for the entire party in both that of Sacred Soil and in Sucker. You have uh, the DPS buffs that come out of the fairy. Your personal DPS output is very high. Like I said, your MP management is very, very... Uh, easy to go about with Scholar. They gave you tools to do burst AoE healing if you need it, burst single target healing if you need it. It's just a jack of all trades. It's very similar to the warrior problem. Um, that's why Scholar's not out of the meta is because everything comes together to what feels like the most, one of the most complete jobs in the game, whereas Nocturnal Astro is definitely the best healer. I feel Nocturnal Astro is without a doubt the best healer, but it doesn't bring all of the same tools that a Scholar does. You know, it's giving up up, it, it's it doesn't have like the pet it doesn't have um it doesn't have guaranteed mitigation a lot of it's rng you can't guarantee a bowl will be up for everything you can guarantee a sacred soil will be up for everything so you know and on top of that it's personal dps but is la dps output is lacking compared to the scholar and then Ash and then uh diurnal astro is fantastic so much so that white mage has practically been pushed out of the meta um so there's there's a lot of things there's a lot of interesting problems where white mages unique aspects it's protected stone skin were taken away and now that astrologian's been buffed to all hell buffed to all hell not nerfed buffed because it's it's buffing it so hard it's going through heaven and then coming back up through hell it's not even possible but somehow they figured out a way to do it um and that's causing issues in the balancing of healers so i what i had to say about the off healing thing was what i said before that's still sufficient but when talking about the jobs and their balance i uh, i don't think What's it called? I don't think it's a matter of main heal versus off heal. I think it's a matter of every fight has its own responsibilities, and that's kind of where the balance of healers is right now. That's a little cut off again. Hey, Mr. Happy, with people speculating that Samurai will be a new job with Stormblood and debating whether it will be a tank or DPS, do you feel that we need another tank? I mean, here's the thing. You don't ever need... We don't need more DPS. We don't need more healers. We don't need more anything. We don't need more, but it'd be cool to get it. That's pretty much it. And if you're going to release new jobs, you always have to keep in mind the balance of the duty finder as much as sometimes it'd be cool to just get a million DPS of all of us. Oh man, all those things. It would destroy the, it would destroy the duty finder. And on top of that, you want to make sure that your tank players go, you know what? I'm getting kind of tired of the, the way this tank plays, but I've, I've played the other two tanks. Oh, here's another new tank. Holy moly, this is way cooler. You want them to have options and you want to attract players that maybe wouldn't have otherwise tanked if it wasn't a job that they absolutely loved or they just didn't love the currently existing tanks. You want to pull them into that role. And that's why we introduce things like new tanks and new healers. We don't need new anything. We were fine with the jobs that we had before. We got Astro though. We got Machinist though. We got what was the last one? Dark Knight, though, and those were all really good additions once they had been balanced over the over the matter of four patches, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, what we need is never a good question. It's what we want, and I want Samurai to be a tank. <laughs> That's just how I feel. On to the next one. Hello, Mr. Happy. This is Final Sim, and welcome to my question on your channel. So many questions this week. You spelled weak wrong. Sorry. So here it goes. One, why do you say foresight is useless? So foresight at current defense values equals out to about an 8% physical mitigation. That is worse than all of the other defensive cooldowns that you use that are uh, effectively meant directly for mitigation, other than things that only work for a single hit. And even then, you could argue that if it blocks enough damage, something like Sheltron or Raw Intuition, Raw Intuition is god tier, don't know why I would even compare it to that, uh, that these things are still more efficient than getting the 8% out of Foresight. On top of that, it is only physical damage that it blocks, and if any, if Paladin has proven anything, it's that people just don't care about physical mitigation. You know what I mean? It's great to have, it's not, like, if you have Foresight, there's no reason not to use it if you're blocking against physical damage, if you're going to be taking physical damage. But compared to, I, it's one of the abilities I would put on the chopping block for the expansion, just because it's clearly the weakest of the bunch, and you could probably do something way cooler as a mitigation tool than this defense increasing tool. The thing is, if it keeps scaling with more defense, with more gear, maybe it ends up at a point where it's actually really good in the expansion, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, two, how much DPS should a, a Paladin be doing? I don't know, I can't answer that. You gotta go to FF Logs, look for somebody, 
Look for like, don't look at the top percentage because that's always skewed. Look at the percentages of like people who are in the middle and are clearing and kind of aim for that amount. And three, how much is the idol level weapon for Zervon going to be? We don't know for certain. My guess would be 265. There's a rumor going around that, or a, a potential mistranslation, I should say, that Zervon is harder than A12 Savage. From what I understand, he actually just meant Zervon's harder than A12 and Sophia Extreme. So if he's harder than A12 Savage, 270, 275 weapon. If he's just harder than Sophia, 265 weapon. I think we're going to see the 265 weapon. All right, we've got a few more questions left. Let's see. Uh, hey, Mr. Happy, long time viewer. First time asking. Hey, welcome. I played Final Fantasy XIV for a total of four months spread in a year. I have White Mage 60, Bard 55, and almost all crafting at 50, Mining 60, Botany 50. I played on the Brynhildr servers, and uh, since I started last week, I entered again for the free four days, and I had the feeling there wasn't many people playing Party Finder Empty Max 5. I want to resubscribe in January, but I also think about moving to a different server. Yeah, other than, like, the primary servers... The individual server party finders, and that's just true for almost every server, are more empty than not. Balmung, Gilgamesh, sometimes like Behemoth has a few, but a lot of servers have sub-10 party finders up, even during peak hours. Question is, do you recommend me to change server? That's up to you. If you're not leaving any friends behind and you want to go to a more populated server, that's fine. Keep in mind that the party finder is getting cross-server functionality. All the servers within a single data center, for example, all the, all the servers in the Ether data center will be able to make party finders and play with each other in patch 3.5. You won't be able to play with people in the primal data center, but they'll be all be able to play with each other. You just won't be able to play with them. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you're not leaving any friends behind, I mean, just pick a server. Go to Balmung, go to Gilgamesh, go to Behemoth, go to Excalibur. Go to Leviathan. Go to something other than Brynhildr because it sounds like you don't want to be there. And next one. Hey, you haps. Hope the holidays and birthday are treating you well. Well, so far, my friend. I edited this since your video discussing the Spider-Man shirt came out. I was going to ask how likely you thought it was Blue Mage, but you preempted me. So instead of that, how do you think Blue Mage will work? I've done, I think I've done a video like this before. I think that the only way to... I, okay, let me, let me rephrase. It's not the only way to do it. I think the most likely way to do it is just a fuck it job quests every few levels. I think that's what it's going to end up being for Blue Mage... I mean, I'm okay with being wrong on this one because I don't want it to be that way. I think that's how it's going to ultimately end up, though. Just job quests every five levels and then eventually every two levels or whatever. They decide to rebalance, who knows, going into the expansion. And uh, that's just what it is. We'll see how it works out. But uh, that's where I'm placing my bets. All right, two more posts. See, this is a good thing I didn't do it live because I wouldn't have been able to even get to Twitch questions. Oh, boy, what a reveal. I am just occupied with Final Fantasy X for a butt still. Oh, okay. I understand what you're saying. And I feel a bit nostalgic to so have a recycled coin... Excuse me, I keep burping a lot. I've been very gassy. Coin flip. Against log-off fatigue for the cinematic experience. Well, neither of these scenes spoilerific, so I'm going to go with... Oh, you had to apologize at the end. This is not going to be good. Should Final Fantasy XIV have auto-playing cutscenes? You don't have to press enter X. Yes, they should. I've wanted this for such a long time. Yes, I would love to have an auto auto-play cutscenes automatically proceed every six seconds like just a timer like between one and ten seconds to progress the text yes please please one day please and the final question on the forums happy christmas mr happy merry christmas to you too good sir or madam got a quick 15 question for you so i stumbled upon a video guide for something in the game a few days ago and the person playing the game had a question mark as one of his equipped weapon spells what is the question mark item is it limit break magic i have crafted one of those so you're talking about unicast spells i believe unicast spells are a single spell cast it means it's just gonna it's just gonna throw the spell out once and it can be any of the three elements in the game. It can be either fire magic, lightning magic, or ice magic, and it is completely random. There's unicast 1, 2, and 3 magic, with unicast 1 magic being fire, thunder, and blizzard, with unicast 2 magic being fire, thunder, and blizzara, and with uh, unicast 3 magic being fireaga, uh, thundaga, and blizzaga. So uh, hopefully that answers your questions, because I'm pretty sure that's what you are referring to. But anyway, that's going to be the last question from the forum. So that is the end of Mondays with Mr. Happy, this Christmas edition. Christmas slash birthday slash in between them both. Videos at the bottom of the video, because originality in my speech, and I'm losing it right now, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching the videos this last week. It has been fantastic producing content, and hopefully those of you who enjoyed the fan festival will have plenty, much, plenty to say under my comment sections on my videos this week. But anyway, thank you for watching, and until next time, everyone, take care.